Hello everybody, and welcome back to Guys Teach Stuff. I'm Shadi, I teach the physics section of this channel, the best section. And today, we'll be talking about 7kc and 7kd. But let's start off with 7kc. Friction. So friction is the force between two touching objects. It can slow things down or make things stay still. The friction between sort of your clothes, your chair, makes everything sort of get, get held in place. For example, if I'm walking, the reason why my foot sort of stays planted in the ground as I walk forward is because of the friction between my foot and the ground. We can sort of increase this friction and make it more useful to us by producing more of it. For example, rubber is a certain material which produces a lot of friction, which is why it's commonly used in car tires so that it can grip onto the road and prevent the cars from sliding off. However, it is important to note that friction is not always useful. We want things to move faster and more easily sometimes. Let's say a fan, right? If we have a fan, the moving parts inside the fan will inevitably have friction, which will slow them down and make the fan rotate slower. And we don't want that. Another example would be the axles of a bike. We want these axles to have as little friction as possible in order for the bike to have a greater speed. Now we can reduce friction by using smoother surfaces or lubricants such as oil or grease. Adding a lubricant is called lubrication. Another thing I'd like to note is that friction can also wear things away. Let's take a common everyday example, a rubber or an eraser. As you use the rubber or eraser, bits of the rubber, bits of the eraser will start coming out and it'll start sort of wearing away, right? Over time, the rubber gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you can no longer use it. And that's because of the friction between the rubber and the paper over time. Friction can also produce heat and noise. Let's say, for example, rub your hands, rub your hands for a second, really fast. What you'll find is that your hands get warm and produce some sound. That's because of the friction between your two hands as you rub them together. Another example is that if a car engine runs without lubricants, it'll start to overheat and it'll stop working. And rusty door hinges, as you know, make quite a bit of a creaky sound, don't they? And that's because of the friction. Friction due to liquids and gases can also occur and slow things down. Air resistance and water resistance is what I'm talking about here. However, they can also be reduced by having smooth surfaces and smooth shapes. Now, I'm a firm believer in making people completely understand what I'm trying to teach them, which is why I'm going to try and tell you how friction works and why it occurs, even though it isn't really in the textbook. So what happens in friction is that every surface has tiny little irregularities and tiny little ridges. Any surface of any material. Now, what happens is that as you slide these materials over each other, the ridges and irregularities on these surfaces interlock, causing friction, basically, causing resistance to movement. Now see, what's interesting is that this is also the reason why rougher surfaces produce more friction than smoother surfaces. Rougher surfaces have more and larger irregularities than smaller surfaces. Now what this means is that when these surfaces interlock, it's harder for these ridges to get loose with each other, right? Which produces more friction in rougher surfaces. Whilst on the other hand, with smoother surfaces, the opposite effect can be seen. Now we'll be moving on to 7kd, pressure. So pressure is the amount of force pushing on a certain area. Let's say for example I have 30 newtons pressing on 30 centimeters squared, right? The equation for pressure is force divided by area. And pressure is measured in pascals, which is essentially one newton per meter squared. So that means if you're given a question where they want you to write the answer in pascals, you must first convert the area from whatever you're given into meters squared to get it in pascals. For my example from earlier, when I have 30 newtons over 30 centimeters squared, that'll be one newton per centimeter squared because that's 30 over 30, which is equal to one. 
So we can derive from the equation of, per of force over area that if you keep the force the same for a larger area, the pressure will be lower. For the smaller area, the pressure will be higher. But if you keep the area the same, the larger the force, the larger the pressure, and the smaller the force, the smaller the pressure. We can actually see this in everyday life. For example, when we look at the difference between blunt and sharp knives, when we look at blunt knives, they cut through things less easily than sharper knives. And that's because of the fact they exert less pressure on whatever you're trying to cut with them, because of the fact that they have a larger amount of area. So with the same amount of force and a larger area, you will have less pressure than a sharper knife, which has less area than a blunt knife, and so exerts more pressure. So now let's work through a pretty simple example. Let's say I want to find out the pressure exerted on 20 centimeters squared of area when there is 1000 newtons acting on it. So the first thing you should do, first thing even I always do, write out the equation. Pressure equals force over area. Then you'd substitute your values in. Now you get pressure equals 1000 newtons over 20 centimeters squared. We do some math and we eventually arrive at pressure equals 50 newtons per centimeter squared. Now let's say I wanted to throw a curveball at you and I want you to calculate the same pressure with the exact values I just gave you but in pascals, which is newtons per meter squared. Well, you do the first same steps, pressure equals force over area, but then instead of doing pressure equals 1000 over 20, what you have to do is you'd have to convert the centimeter squared into meter squared. And we do that by dividing it by 10,000. So what you get is pressure equals 1000 over 0 0.002, which gives you pressure equals 500,000 pascals when you do the maths. And that's how you'd figure it out in pascals. So, in conclusion, today we learned how to recall the effects of friction, explain some ways in which friction can be changed, identify situations in which friction is helpful or not helpful, and recall why friction occurs. In terms of pressure, we learned how to calculate pressure and recall its units, and describe effects of high and low pressure in simple situations. Thank you for watching the video, go like and subscribe, and have a look at our other videos. See you!